committee will come to order. The bills before us today address a wide range of public health issues, all of them, and the amendments that will be introduced during our markup enjoy bipartisan support. H.R. 903, the Dental Emergency Responder Act of 2010, amends current law to to include dentists and dental facilities as part of various national emergency management and preparedness programs that has been introduced by Congressman Stupak. H.R. 1745, the Family Health Care Accessibility Act of 2010, extends the protection of the Federal Tort Claims Act to those health professionals who volunteer their services at community health centers. Mr. Tim Murphy and Mr. Green have long championed this effort. Mr. Green will offer an amendment to the bill to expand and clarify the description of the health services that may be covered. H.R. 2923, the Combat Methamphetamine Enhancement Act, makes technical corrections to the 2006 Combat Meth Act. The corrections come at the recommendations of the Drug Enforcement Agency. Mr. Gordon is the sponsor of this legislation. H.R. 3199, the Emergency Medics Transition Act authorizes a new program designed to help returning veterans uh, become emergency medical technicians. Representatives Harmon, Sarbanes, and Boyer have led this effort. H.R. 3470, the Nationally Enhancing the Well-Being of Babies Through Research Now or Newborn Act, establishes a program of infant mortality pilot projects. This bill is authored by Congressman Cohn. Mr. Pallone will offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute which places this program within the current authorities of the HHS Healthy Start program. H.R. 5710, the National All Schedules Prescription Electronic Reporting Reauthorization Act of 2010, or NASPR, makes the improvements to the NASPR program and reauthorizes it for three years. Congressman Whitfield, Pallone, and Stupak are the lead sponsors of this bill. H.R. 5756, the Training and Research for Autism Improvements Nationwide Act of 2010, or TRAIN Act. Uh, there seems to be a pattern of, uh, of, of uh, getting a name for the total bill by taking the letters. I, I thought this is the last one of the series, and it's finally dawned on me. Well, this TRAIN Act authorizes programs to support interdisciplinary training, continuing education, and technical assistance for children and adults on the autism spectrum and their families. Mr. Doyle has introduced H.R. 5756 and will offer an amendment that makes several technical corrections to the bill. H.R. 5809, the Dr Safe Drug Disposal Act of 2010 addresses a longstanding program, a problem with so-called drug take-back efforts which are designed to allow people to safely and securely dispose of their unused or unwanted medicines outside of the home. This bill is a joint product of Mr. Inslee and Mr. Stupak, as well as Congressman Smith and Moran. Mr. Stupak will offer a technical amendment to the bill. I'd like to thank Mr. Barton and Mr. Shimkus, along with their staff, for working with us to move these important bills forward uh, toward becoming law. Majority and minority staff work together, along with each bill's sponsors, to reach agreement on each bill. The amendments made in subcommittee and those amendments will be offered today. And I particularly want to thank the chairman of the subcommittee, Frank Pallone, for processing these bills in a regular order way with hearings and uh, markups. I look forward to continuing to work together in the spirit on health issues and across the committee's jurisdiction. And Mr. Barton, I want to recognize you for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to submit my formal statement for the record and just make a few few remarks. We have eight bills before the committee today. These are all bills that have come out of the health subcommittee where, as you said, Mr. Uh, uh, Pallone and Mr. Shimkus have worked with members on both sides to, uh, uh, to report them. Um, they're all very good bills. We, we, we tend to lose sight of the fact that what we do up here sometimes uh, has far-reaching consequences. Um, we get bogged down in the big issues uh, that make the front pages. Oftentimes, those don't go anywhere. Uh, there'll be very little press coverage of these bills but these bills actually will probably become law and uh, all of them will help in some way uh, the needs of our, our, our population in terms of health care. There are two, two bills in particular that I, that I want to comment on. Um, 
the Emergency Medic Transition Act of 2010, uh, 3199, uh, it takes a common sense approach that if we've spent thousands of dollars training young men and women in the military uh, in, in how to provide emergency health care, uh, it might make sense to make it easier for them to transition back into the uh, uh, civilian workforce by giving them some some uh, extra credit and 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 for doing that. So, HR 3199 is a win-win. We take our veterans as they come back home, and if they have medical training and want to be emergency EMTs, make it a little bit easier to do that. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, another one is the uh, Family Health Accessibility Act, 1745, that uh, Congressman Murphy uh, has worked so long and hard on. It's a similar approach. We have lots of doctors uh, and healthcare professionals that want to volunteer their services in some of our uh, indigent health clinics, but because of uh, liability issues, they can't they they can't do it because they can't afford the um, the coverage, the the liability coverage. Uh, Dr. Murphy's bill. Uh, makes these uh, these healthcare professionals that wish to volunteer in the in the clinics uh, gives them some uh, uh, indemnification and gives them some coverage that they wouldn't otherwise have. So those are two two bills, uh, uh, especially I want to highlight. But all eight of these bills are good bills, and uh, I hope that we will move them um, uh, very quickly to the house <coughs> house floor where they can be voted on. I uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yield back. Thank you, Mr. Barton. I'd like to now recognize the chairman of the subcommittee, Mr. Plum, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Waxman. I want to thank you for holding this markup today on these eight public health bills that were reported out of the subcommittee last week. Uh, the markup today on pending public health legislation is a result of a lot of cooperation between the majority and the minority. And as I stated last week, I appreciate the time that Ranking Member Shimkus and his staff spent getting a consensus uh, with us on these bills. The eight pieces of legislation basically will strengthen our capacity to respond to emergencies, arm us with the resources needed to fight prescription drug abuse, and improve our health care workforce in the community. You detailed, Mr. Chairman, the various sponsored and thank sponsors of the bills and thank them, so I'm not going to uh, go through all that today, but I did want to mention uh, one bill in particular, uh, and that's the NASPER bill, because I've worked uh, with Representative Woodfield, Mr. Shimkus, and Mr. Stupak for many years on NASPER. This is the first reauthorization that we've had, and this law was originally enacted in 2005 and created an HHS grant program administered by SAMHSA for states to establish or support prescription drug monitoring programs. Ultimately, these programs will prevent overuse of drugs and illegal diversion. We heard from both the DEA and the ONDCP last week prior to markup about their support for NASPER, as well as for Mr. Inslee and Mr. Stupak's bill, the Safe Drug Disposal Act, and both of these bills I think are very important. I wanted to mention one thing, though, in closing, and that is that, as I said in the subcommittee mark last week, there are many good bills by members of the committee that are still under strong considera consideration for movement before we adjourn this fall. Uh, the bills we did last week in subcommittee were consensus bills, and we're going to work with Chairman Waxman, Ranking Member Barton, and Mr. Shimkus, and other members of the committee on bills over the August uh, recess period, and we'll have another subcommittee mark when we return in September. So I just wanted members to know that just because their bills were not part of this uh, last week and today, that doesn't mean that we're not uh, seriously working on the others that I know are priorities for the members. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, again. Thank you, Mr. Pallone. Further opening statements? Mr. Shimkus, uh, uh, thank you, member Mr. of the Chairman. subcommittee, five uh, minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank uh, you, and I want to thank uh, Chairman Pallone. Uh, since becoming a ranking member of the Health Subcommittee, uh, Chairman Pallone and I spent, we spent a lot of time together. Um, I've uh, continued to do my role as uh, loyal opposition, and sometimes I'm a burr underneath the saddle. But uh, this is an example of the great things we can do when we work together. Um, uh, the majority had bills they wanted to put forward. We had some that we would like to put forward. Uh, we really had a short time between the subcommittee and the full committee, and issues were raised at the subcommittee mark, but that's to the credit of staff on both sides working together. We're, we're here today, and 
fully support this legislation and even though sometimes we're we can be very contentious when there are good things to be done i i think this is a great tribute to the committee and i look forward to continue to do that in the, in the future i want to thank you uh chairman waxman for your diligence and your time and i yield back thank you very much uh chair will recognize members who wish to make opening statements mr stupak thank you mr back. chairman thanks for holding the this uh, markup on these eight public health bills I support all the bills the committee will consider today and urge their passage, but I'm particularly looking forward to the passage of three of the public health bills today, H.R. 903, the Dental Emergency Responder Act, H.R. 5710, the National All Schedules Prescription Electronic Reporting Reauthorization Act, and H.R. 5809, the Safe Drug Disposal Act. I'll discuss these bills in greater detail as they're brought up, but I want to use this time to thank my colleagues and staff on both sides uh, of the aisle for working with me and with our with my staff for, and for their commitment to passing these bills out of the subcommittee last week and hopefully out of committee today. I urge all my colleagues to support these good pieces of legislation that support public health. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Stupak. Uh, Mr. Whitfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and Ranking Member Barton and Mr. Deloney and Mr. Shimkus and Bart Stupak for the work that you've done on the NASPER bill, uh, that's the only one I'm just going to talk about briefly, H.R. 5710. Uh, as we remember, uh, there was an unauthorized program relating to prescription drug monitoring for a number of years, and five years ago, this committee uh, authorized the program, and since then, we've gone from very few states up to 40 states that now have electronic means to uh, monitor prescription drugs. The program is now administered over at HHS rather than the Department of Justice and DEA. And uh, this reauthorization will also provide a, a more per permanent funding mechanism uh, for this important legislation. And uh, I'm delighted that the committee is uh, intending to move on it today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further opening statements? Uh, let's see, by seniority, which way do we go? We would go. Well, Mr. N outside down, so Ms. Harmon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I want to congratulate you on moving these bills forward uh, at this time when our constituents are so cynical about Congress doing anything. It seems that uh, bipartisanship is breaking out all over the place, and I want to commend uh, particularly Mr. Barton for uh, complementing my bill, H.R. 3199, the Emergency Medic Transition EMT Act, which had bipartisan support in the Health Subcommittee. I also want to thank Mr. Barton uh, for uh, supporting an amendment I offered to the oil spill legislation a week or two ago about a study on uh, uh, the safety, environmental impact, and cost of drilling uh, relief wells simultaneously with uh, deep water wells. Uh, it is a useful thing for our committee to work on a bipartisan basis. All of these bills are good. I'll talk more on the EMT bill when it comes up. But thank you particularly, Mr. Chairman, for uh, making certain that uh, we do move legislation that is in the public interest, even at a time of toxic partisanship. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Two thanks in one opening statement. If it had been a three, it would have been real trouble. <laughs> so Mr. Murphy. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I want to thank you and um, Mr. Plone and uh, the ranking members, uh, Shimkits and others, uh, and all the members of this committee for helping to move forward H.R. 1745. In particular, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Green as well. We've been working on this legislation for a long time uh, that allows a wide range of medical professionals to volunteer at community health centers. I'd also like to suggest that as, as we move this bill forward and members go back to the district, they spend some time during the month of August visiting community health centers. Um, we will all hear the stories of the backlog of patients, uh, whether they are uh, dental patients or prenatal care or pediatrics or uh, uh, geriatric or some of the level where uh, the family is trying to come to community, mental, uh, community health centers. Uh, some don't have access to a doctor because it's on the backlog. This allows a wide range of medical professionals to volunteer. I might add that perhaps it would be good to get many members of this committee. We have several physicians and nurses on this committee that perhaps they'd like to spend some volunteer time and and uh, go back to some practice as well at these uh, clinics. But it is extremely important, uh, and the great thing about this is it really is a way of bringing out the best and brightest of America to do 
uh, that sort of community service which we hope is modeled throughout our, our nation and uh, with that again I thank you and the members of this committee for moving this bill forward thank you thank you mr. Murphy mr. Doyle did you wish to be recognized no uh, mr. Inslee Thank you. Uh, it's great to have some bipartisan successes. I want to thank particularly Mr. Stupak for his leadership on the Safe Drug Disposal Act. It's been a joy working with him. Uh, he's certainly the toughest baseball player in congressional history, and now he has a great achievement uh, really trying to deal with this problem. And it is a big problem. Actually, prescription drug abuse, at least in my state, has now become uh, really the number one cause of new uh, youth addiction and, and drug abuse problems. So I'm glad we're taking a, a meaningful step. I just want to say two things about this bill that are very productive. One, I think we found a sweet spot to allow flexibility for communities to design programs. And two, I think we found a way to make sure we do this in an environmentally friendly manner, and it's a great success on a bipartisan basis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Further opening statements, Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the bills before us today are important. H.R. 5710 reauthorizes the NASPER program. I was happy to co-sponsor the bill. and thankful that my staff was involved in the drafting of the reauthorization. Mr. Murphy's bill, H.R. Uh, 1745, it's proper to extend the Federal Tort Claims Act coverage to volunteers in federally qualified health centers. The scope has been narrowed during the negotiations, but I believe it's important to move this issue forward so that health centers have a wider pool of medical professionals from which to pull. But this should really only be the first step. We should adopt national liability reforms, more modest approaches might be to provide similar Federal Tort Claims Act protection for those practicing in the 9-11 survivor programs and for those achieving accountable care organization status seeing Medicare patients. And finally, as a co-sponsor of H.R. 903, I believe it is common sense to ensure dentists and dental schools can aid in the planning and response to disaster, living, limiting their involvement to helping this country was a drafting oversight which requires correction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Further opening statements on the Republican side? If not all, without objection, all members will have an opportunity to insert an opening statement into the record. Uh, the first bill to be considered is H.R. 903, the Dental Emergency Responder Act. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Are there any amendments to the bill? If not, the motion comes to order reported H.R. 903 uh, as amended with the recommendation of the bill do pass. All those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye, opposed no, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. The next bill under consideration is H.R. 1745, the Family Health Care Accessibility Act. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Uh, Mr. Green, I understand you have an amendment at the desk. Chairman, I have an amendment. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. The gentleman is recognized to explain his amendment. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, H.R. 1745 would extend federal tort claims coverage to licensed volunteer practitioners for Section 330 services provided under the Public Health Service Act at community health centers. This legislation would allow licensed practitioners to volunteer and provide uh, them adequate tort claims protection is equal to the employees at community health centers. The amendment represents a bipartisan compromise, and I appreciate, uh, especially want to thank uh, Representative Tim Murphy, who introduced this bill for years with his hard work on this legislation. We worked with him uh, and your staff to move this out of the House a couple of times. Unfortunately, the bill's never moved in the Senate. I'm um, hopefully this version of the legislation has a real chance of moving out of the Senate this year because it is crucial to our community health centers, especially following the passage of health reform and our increasing reliance on community health centers to provide primary care. If we continue to rely on community health centers, we need to increase the number of health care providers so many qualified individuals want to volunteer their time but are afraid to do so because they do not have the federal tort claims protection. This legislation would allow volunteers to assist their local community centers and protect, and protect them. And, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, yield back my time. Or, no, I'm sorry, I yield to Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Green, uh, for yielding. And just uh, briefly, I uh, want to also uh, uh, thank you uh, for your continued work on this. I know we couldn't be moving this forward without some teamwork, uh, and you've been uh, terrific to work with, uh, Mr. Green. And uh, I also want to uh, make sure I thank uh, our ranking member, Mr. Barton, uh, who has also been invaluable over the years. And I really hope we can all bring this to the floor quickly and uh, get it over the Senate and uh, pass into law. So. Uh, America's uh, families can begin to have some of this uh, coverage without cost. Thank you very much, and I yield back to the gentleman. Thank you. Any further discussion of the uh, amendment? 
If not, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment offered by Mr. Green will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment's agreed to. Further amendments? Seeing none, the, uh, uh, the motion before us is to report the bill, H.R. 1745, amend, as amended, with the, rec the recommendation the bill do pass. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion's agreed to. Next bill under consideration is H.R. 2923, the Combat, Combat Methamphetamine Enhancement Act. Without objection, the bill will be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Are there any amendments? Seeing none, the motion now comes to report H.R. 2923 with a recommendation that the bill do pass. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Next bill we consider is H.R. 3199, the Emergency Medic Transition Act, EMT Act. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Are there any amendments to the bill? Seeing none, the motion now before us is to report H.R. 3199, 3199 uh, as amended uh, from subcommittee with a recommendation that the bill do pass. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Next bill under consideration is H.R. 3470, the Newborn Act, Nationally Enhancing the Well-Being of Babies Through Outreach and Research, NOW Act. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Uh, are, are there amendments to the bill? I understand, Mr. Pallone, you have an amendment. Without objection, the amendment would be considered as read, and the gentleman uh, from New Jersey will recognize to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. H.R. 3470, known as the Newborn Act, requires the Secretary of HHS to award grants to state, county, city, territorial, or tribal health departments to establish pilot programs to reduce infant mortality. Grants will be targeted to those 15 geographical areas with the highest rates. My amendment would place this program into the existing Public Health Service Act authority for the Healthy Start program. As a result, the program would be administered by the Health Resources and Service Administration instead of the CDC. I'd ask the amendment be considered, and I yield back. Any further discussion of the amendment, Mr. Barton? Just briefly, I want to thank the uh, subcommittee chairman, full committee chairman, and, and their staffs for accepting this. This was a suggestion of um, myself and several other members on our side, and I think it's, it's an excellent um, improvement to the bill, and we appreciate the uh, bipartisan agreement to accept it. Um, if you yield to me, I, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Barton and his staff for working with us on this bill, and uh, I think this amendment uh, improves the legislation slightly, but it improves the legislation. <laughs> Further discussion? All those in favor of the amendment will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment's agreed to. Motion before us now is to report H.R. 3470 as amended with the recommendation the bill do pass. All those in favor of the uh, motion will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. The bill before us is H.R. 5710, the National All Schedules Description Electronic Reporting Reauthorization Act of 2010. Without object, that's so you don't think it's the National All Schedules Description Electronic Reporting Reauthorization Act of 2009. This is 2010. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Uh, are there any amendments? Seeing none, the motion before us is to report H.R. 5710 as amended from the subcommittee with the recommendation the bill do pass. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. The bill before us now is H.R. 5756, the Train Act, or sometimes known as the Training and Research for Autism Improvements Nationwide Act. Without objection, the bill would be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Uh, Mr. Mr. Doyle, Chairman, you I have, have an, an amendment? I have an amendment. At Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read and gentlemen's recognized to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I want to thank my friends, uh, yourself, Chairman Waxman, Chairman Pallone, and Ranking Member Joe Barton for working with me on this bill. As many of you know, autism has been a primary focus of my time here in Congress. And even though there's much we still don't know, in just the time that I've been here, we've seen light years worth of improved understanding of the condition. One of the most important things we've learned is that early intervention works. 
that's why i've always appreciated the chairman waxman work with me during health reform on making sure plans in the exchange included needed behavioral health benefits among the many items that the house passed in our health care reform bill that the senate did not was a services training and research initiative for children and adults with autism so i decided to introduce it as a standalone bill that's h r fifty seven fifty six the training and research for autism improvements nationwide or train act and i'm glad it's being marked up today i think that it's important for my colleagues to know that we're not reinventing the wheel the bill here is based on expanding and enhancing the network of university centers of excellence on developmental disabilities known as you says and i think that my colleagues should know that the bill helps minority serving institutions gain the skill set and resources to work with and to serve currently underserved populations one of the most important things that n f l star rodney peets white holly robinson peet has done is to help people understand that autism doesn't know race and can affect any family members of the subcommittee should also know that this bill is supported by groups like autism speaks the autism society of america self advocates from the autism self advocate network and many many other organizations this manager's amendment makes several agreed upon technical changes to the committee print of h r fifty seven fifty six reflecting technical assistance from the administration for children and families or a c f within the department of health and human services such as making certain that you see seeking grant funds under this section demonstrate that families in addition to individuals on the autism spectrum will participate in the planning and design of authorized activities and ensuring that you said seeking capacity building grants to collaborate with minority serving institutions provide services and conduct research and education i want to thank my good friend mr barton for working with me on a bipartisan basis to bring h r fifty seven fifty six before the committee and to make these changes to the underlying bill lastly i have to thank karen nelson ruth pats and morris emily gibbons and ryan long with chairman waxman chairman flown and ranking member barton staffs respectively their work to bring this committee to bring this committee today brought us an improved bill that is worthy of our colleagues support mr chairman for those reasons i ask my colleagues to approve the manager's amendment and the underlying bill and i yield back the balance of my time chair wants to acknowledge and to and to not only acknowledge but to praise the leadership that mr doyle has shown in dealing with all the issues that families are facing every day with autism trying to make sure the people who have autism get get the medical care they need trying to do what we can to learn more about this disease how to prevent it and how to deal with in the future this affects so many families across this country and i want to single out mr doyle as one of the great leaders in the fight for the families dealing with autism is there further discussion of the amendment if not all those in favor of the doyle amendment will say i i oppose no the eyes have it and the amendments agreed to with if there's nothing further on this bill the motion before us is to report h r fifty seven fifty six as amended with a recommendation that the bill do pass all those in favor of the motion will say i i oppose no the eyes have it and the motions agreed to the next bill is h r fifty eight zero nine the safe drug disposal act without objection the bill would be considered as read and open for amendment at any point mr smith chairman you have an amendment i remember that objection the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with and you are recognized for five minutes thank you mr chairman this bipartisan amendment does one simple thing it clarifies that the dea regulations set forth in this legislation may not require require any entity to establish a drug take back program rather the amendment seeks to make clear that these drug take back programs are voluntary i want to thank my colleague mr ensley mr flown mr shin kiss and all the colleagues on both sides aisle for working on this legislation and for their hard hard work and commitment to empower patients to help prevent prescription drug abuse especially among our young folks i urge my colleagues to vote in support of the amendment and the final legislation yield back mr chairman further discussion of the stoop back amendment if not we'll proceed to a vote all those in favor of the amendment will say aye i oppose no the ayes have it the amendments agreed to the motion before us now is to report h r fifty eight zero nine as amended with the recommendation that the bill do pass all those in favor of that motion will say aye 
i oppose no the eyes have it the motions agreed to without objection the staff will be permitted to make technical and conforming changes to the measures considered today and further without objection the committee is adjourn